I'm still locked down at home, but Tom has managed to escape. Uh, that's right, Alyssa. We managed to escape to Florida. We are here at uh, the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, as a matter of fact, being properly and appropriately socially distanced from pretty much everything. But yesterday, when we were out at the launch site or near the launch site with uh, some others from Air Force Media uh, to gather and hopefully get imagery of the launch going off. You know, uh, launch pad 39A is, was just across the water from us, and it would have been a great setup for a launch, but, well, you know what happened. This was to be an historic launch for many reasons. Americans would be launched into space from American soil for the first time in a decade. It was to be an American rocket, but more significant, a rock, rocket owned by and operated by a private company. NASA was just the customer. Booking two seats in the Dragon capsule built by SpaceX, sitting atop the Falcon 9 rocket, another SpaceX product. The two NASA astronauts, Robert Behnken and Douglas Hurley, rode to that rocket in Teslas. And billionaire Elon Musk developed Tesla, of course, and started SpaceX. The vice president arrived in Air Force Two, and a little while later, followed by the president in Air Force One. And then, we waited for the scheduled 4.33 p.m. launch, hurrying back to our cars when the thunderstorms rolled through. We're sitting out here in the car in the heat and thunderstorms at uh, a viewing station waiting for, for it to come up. And we got all the necessary supplies. We got our masks, we got our almonds, and we got our phones. The weather was a concern all day, but mission managers found enough optimism in the forecast that they kept the countdown going. About an hour before launch time, the weather started to clear. We all became optimistic. And at T-minus 40 minutes, they decided to start pumping kerosene, rocket fuel, and liquid oxygen into the Falcon 9. Less than 30 minutes from launch, the weather officer said, if he could have just 10 more minutes, a launch might be possible. 1645 local, I think we'll probably be clear on all the rules, but uh, not quite, not quite going to make it for this. It was an instantaneous launch window at exactly 4.33, and if they couldn't do it then, well, they couldn't do it at all. And I have stand by. continue to violate a couple different weather rules that we now do not expect to clear in time to allow for a launch today. We'll go ahead and end uh, today's launch attempt. Launch control would end the launch auto sequence and proceed into the launch abort auto sequence, please. Launch abort has started. And so, Alyssa, we were very close, just about 17 minutes away from launch. And when they finally scrubbed it, the, cl the clouds were starting to go away. It was starting to clear up. The light was getting nice. It would have been a beautiful launch, uh, but unfortunately not to be. But hey, we're going to stick it out. Uh, we'll be here uh, Saturday is the next scheduled window at 322. Hopefully that comes off. If not, Sunday afternoon is the next uh, opportunity. And we'll stick around for that, too, because this is such an historic launch an amazing moment for American space. It is, it is certainly, and I, uh, I hope it goes off well Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, you, you and me both. <laughs> <laughs>